in Columbia, South Carolina plays a pretty solid first 24 minutes of basketball versus 22nd ranked Tennessee. Problem is, in college basketball, the games are a full 40 minutes, and the final 16 of which don't go so well for Frank Martin and his Gamecocks. This team is still trying to figure things out with the loss of Clyde Trapp and leading scorer Amir Sims. It'll be up to guys like Hunter Tyson, Alamir Dawes, and Nick Honor, who have significant veteran experience, to fill a greater leadership role and be that go-to guy moving forward. Got it. So kind of something like this. In Clemson, Julia Haskins, 7 Sports. Sydney says that unpredictable weather limits her time on the course during the cold winter months, but she still finds ways to put in work as she prepares for her first collegiate season. Chase Hunter pulls up and knocks down the long jumper. Game tied at 10. The Yellow Jackets respond with a 6-0 run. Jordan Usher with a 3 from the wing. Georgia Tech up 33-20 at the break. Under 5 minutes to play, Alamir Dawes gets free for 3 of his 18 points. Tigers within 6. Under two minutes to go, P.J. Hall hits the turnaround jumper. The Dorman alum scores 16 of his 18 points in the second half. How have you seen the, the sport change over the course of your time covering it and seeing it evolve and grow? Well, I think the biggest growth really happened during the pandemic. Who do you see as the future of the sport in the next 5, 10, 15 years? Yeah, it's... Um a good question. PJ Hall was a major reason the Tigers secured this six point win over Florida State, shooting 63% from the floor with a team high of 15 points and seven rebounds. Freshman Bo Collins, Will Shipley, and Kobe Pace were responsible for momentum shifting plays and paired with a stellar performance from quarterback DJ Uyungle made for an unstoppable and seemingly familiar Clemson offense. The first of many plays that changed the trajectory of the matchup between Clemson and Syracuse Friday night began with an interception from safety Tyler Venables, son of defensive coordinator Brent Venables. Yeah, last question I got to ask you, what is your favorite meat to cook on your Traeger grill? <laughs> a little shout out to Traeger yeah. there. Uh, you know, ribeyes are fun. Uh, okay. I love doing that. I do kind of a reverse sear. Dawes has become a weapon from behind the arc this season, and just talking to him about shooting makes him light up. It's something that he's worked on his entire life. As for what Hunter Tyson's extended absence means for this team, well, Brownell said that everyone is going to need to elevate their game, especially younger, bigger guys like Ian Shefflin and Ben Middlebrooks. Duke, on the other hand, also hungry for a win, coming off of an upset against the Virginia Cavaliers, who handed them just their second home loss of the season. Two-time cup champion Kyle Busch turns the fastest lap in the session at just over 65 miles per hour. Kind of like you and me driving to work, except he's doing it on a quarter mile racetrack. On Sunday, they will have four heat races starting at 3 o'clock. Brent Venable's defense is single handedly securing wins for the Tigers this season. And although they had nine out of 11 starters returning, younger guys such as Ruka Rooro, Andrew Makuba, and Levante Bentley have made an impact. Bentley had his first career start over the weekend, recording a team high of 13 tackles. The Hoos are 2-0 and have outscored their opponents 85-14 so far, and although they were against much lesser opponents, you can't ignore the performance of quarterback Brennan Armstrong. He's thrown for 744 yards, ranking him third nationally in passing yards. And is there added pressure filling the shoes of Amir Sims now with the New York Knicks? Um, I won't say it's added pressure. I definitely... I'm excited to do it. A lot of people don't know why. This was a huge play for the sophomore who dropped an interception in the game against Boston College. His dad, of course, runs Clemson's defense, but the father-son dynamic is non-existent once they take the field. Tyson is struggling, playing with two rolled ankles, but said in Monday's press conference that he's finally back to 100%. Paul, on the other hand, has been taking it day to day, working with trainers and going to physical therapy, but says that once the game starts, there's so much adrenaline rushing through his body that he doesn't even notice the pain. If this team wants a shot at the NCAA tournament, they need to start stringing some wins together starting tonight as they take on the Florida State Seminoles. This week in their home opener against South Carolina State, offensive coordinator Tony Elliott wants to focus on building cohesion in the offensive line and balancing the running and passing game to give his running backs more touches. After last week's loss against Syracuse, Coach Brownell was disappointed in his team's performance and said that they were a below average defensive team, but they took a major step forward tonight, forcing 20 turnovers and holding Pittsburgh to just under 50 points. They've already beaten, you know, 
Pitt and University of Miami twice, which is, you know, either of the teams that they're up against in the second round. What do you think they need to do off offensively, assuming, you know, we'll see them in the quarterfinals against Georgia Tech? Yeah, I just really think when I watch this team, when you've got a unicorn type guy like you do in Amir Sim, 